Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, so I hope, yeah, that, so that's a, um, and the recipe's in here as part of the presentation. That's actually lower sodium. It's, I can't say it's low sodium because I did add some sodium to it, but it's lower, so it's certainly not what you're gonna find in the stores. You know, you, mm -hmm. you, you'll yeah. see how ridiculous they are. The store's got less sodium. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I just kind of wanted to remind you guys, I know I mentioned last time I was here, but we're starting to, you might start seeing that Senior U logo, if, especially if you're on my email list and I start sending things out. So what I'm kind of doing now is I'm starting to divide between the food and the gardening and the nutrition and the health and everything else. Um, because one of the things that I've learned is, um, you know, we do a lot of technology courses and things like that. And for example, we're doing one on artificial intelligence. And it's really hard to call like a library and say, hi, I'd like to, you know, talk, do an artificial intelligence course. And they say, great, where are you from? And you say, therapy gardens. And it doesn't necessarily fit, you know, gardening and that. So, we, so you're just going to see us kind of marketing under that name. And then the other thing is, um, I don't know if I mentioned it last time, but I have a couple little flyers. We're actually, this is in response to you folks, we're doing handyman services at people's homes. I have um, my lazy nephew who needs things to do. <laughs> and, uh, is this community service? No, 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 no. Uh, no, and I do, we do actually employ a carpenter as well. A handyman, yeah. So one of the things that I'm, I am running, I should have put it bigger, but at the very bottom, I'm running a little special for Whitman um, to install safety bars and grab bars in people's homes, for like 99 bucks. You're going to pay for the, the bars, obviously, you know, the, the uh, object. But it's one of the things I'm really, I'm glad to be able to do this because this was the original goal of my company was to actually do things not only at the senior centers, but at people's homes. And as you know, I've had a really hard time finding help. And that's been that's been a lot of it. So luckily, I have, you know, a friend of mine who's a carpenter, you know, who um, is moving back up here for a while. So he's able to uh, start a business with me. So it worked out really well. Um, but today this might work out because we have somebody come and do work on a house. Yep. And um, my wife is trying to put a new handrail in the front of our house. Yeah. Yeah. And she's talking about doing exterior painting. Yeah. And if these guys need to hire somebody, yeah. I could always give that to them and see if they want to use these guys. Uh, okay, yeah. Yeah, so we, you know, our yeah, thing is, you know, we like to just, um, you know, we're here to help seniors. So, you know, I don't want to, I don't get involved in like larger construction projects or anything like that. It's, that's, it's just a service for really for only for seniors that we actually work in that senior center right. too. For example, if somebody from Abington called me, I, I probably wouldn't do that because I don't have a relationship with the Abington Senior right. Center, whereas I do with Whitman. So, but anyway, today, yeah, go ahead. Yeah, what's that? Mm -hmm. what's that? How about East Bridgewater? Absolutely, East Bridgewater. Yes. Any of the Bridgewaters is fine. Um, Hanson's fine. Yeah, we do business with them. Most of them we do do business with. You know, it's just, and I have done some business with Abington. I just don't have as close a relationship with them as I do with some of the others, you know. But today we're here to, you know, if you guys want to chat afterwards, I'm happy to chat about it. Um, but today we're here to talk about soup, um, which might seem like a little strange to, you know, have a soup workshop in May, um, close to June. But, um, no, she's not coming. She's not coming? Okay. Okay. Um, we could talk about ice cream. So what I did is I added some cold soups and things like that. And I, I was going to bring a cold soup, but it was kind of cold this morning. I, <laughs> I, you know, the sun was shining and I was ready. I was like, oh, it's a nice day. And I went out and I was like, oh, I need my jacket. So, so that's why I brought you the um, coconut tomato bisque. But I have a bunch of cold soups in here that we can go through as well. Um, this is, don't tell the other presentations, but this is probably my favorite presentation to give um, because I absolutely love soup. And I have a really strong connection with soup where when my mom was alive, I think I've mentioned before she was on dialysis and I was started cooking for her and she loved soup and um, she absolutely, you know, couldn't have a lot of sodium. And that really got me involved in cooking, soup, making soup with, with less sodium. And the more I realized um, how much, uh, how popular soup is, I, I don't real I, people love soup. <laughs> they just love it. So, you know, that's why we, we do prepared foods now too. We sell, we sell soup. So, uh, which is great. Um, but today we're going to talk about really the, the, the crux of this is, is homemade broth, but 
I probably have talked a little bit about broths here in the past. I think I know probably with like the festive soup one. So I probably have talked a little bit about that. And if, if I'm going over stuff that you already know, just tell me and I'll just skip forward. Cause I, you know, I could stand here for three hours and talk about soup. So um, we're also gonna talk about using, hi, welcome, come on in, come on in. Um, we're also gonna talk about using healthier ingredients to increase the, the nutritional value of soup. Now that doesn't, a lot of times people hear healthy and they think bad. They think, oh, it doesn't, it's not gonna taste good. Um, but that's not the case, particularly with soup, that's not the case. We're gonna talk about how to create a variety of soups. And then at the end, I'm gonna show you some, what I'm calling healthy-ish shortcuts. And I know I've shown you some of them before. Um, so thank you, Mary. <laughs> that's okay, the other day, that's, I might be, I might be, yeah. The other day I was at a senior center and uh, the woman kept coming in. At first she had water and she was like, I'm sorry to interrupt you. And I said, that's okay, serve your water. So then she came, she went back and then she had coffee and she came back and said, oh, I'm, I'm sorry. I said, it's okay, go ahead. So then she served coffee. So then she came back for a third time with cut fruit and she had a whole big thing of cut fruit and she spilled it all over everybody. And I said, you know, I love working at the senior centers. You never know what's going to happen. You know? <laughs> It shall remain nameless. Okay. All right, yeah. Um, so we'll talk about some healthiest shortcuts. But before we do that, let's talk about some soup facts. So uh, soup dates back to 20,000 BCE. That's before Common Era. So think about that. That's, that's a really long time. The first canned soup was around in 1897 by... Campbell's. 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 Now, do you know what Campbell's, what their actual revolution in soup was? Because the soup didn't really taste that great. I mean, for the time, maybe it did, but it wasn't anything spectacular. So what was, what was their big invention? What put, that, what put Campbell's on the map? Does anyone know? Very close. It's the, the process they used to condense the soup, and they cut their shipping costs in half. Because you think about it, they were able to send a whole can of soup the water is on the consumer. They have to, you know, so they didn't have to ship the water. So they were able to say basically half, and that's how they were able to undercut pricing and capture the market, you know? And they did that with food scientists, you know? It wasn't even really chefs, it was food scientists. Um, Americans eat about 10 million bowls of soup per year. And thinking back now, if, if soup dates back, you know, so far back, what do you think the first soup was that archeologists, you know, they're reasonably certain the first fish. animal, the first animal. Fish. Okay, he says fish, you say stone soup, meat. I also like vegetables. Hippopotamus. 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 That's, right now, that's the current, that's the chicken noodle. Yeah, I don't think the, I don't think they were eating chicken noodle back then. Maybe chicken, but. Why do they eat a lot of fish back in the biblical days? Yeah, I'm sure they did. Fish. Yeah. Um, so some of the benefits of soup, and a lot of people don't know this, but Done, if you do it right, soup is a, a super healthy and nutritious addition to a diet. Now that means, you know, you don't load it with cream and bacon and all that stuff. If you don't do those things, you're, you're fine. Um, a broth-based soup, if you eat a broth-based soup before you eat a meal, you will eat on average 30% less at that meal. It has to be a broth-based soup, but you know, it's a really great way of kind of controlling your food intake. Um, their broth-based soups are automatically low-calorie. Again, as long as you don't fill them with, with bacon and, uh, you know, whipped cream, I think, I think you're okay. okay. Um, you know, um, they're an excellent way to get more vegetables into your diet. Cooking and preparing at home is good for you. You know, we know this. We know just being puttering around the house, doing things in the kitchen or in the yard, lowers our blood pressure, reduces anxiety. Um, all of those things are very, very good for you. And then the last thing is, you control the sodium, and that's a big part of when you're making food at home. That's probably the biggest part is really the sodium. When you look around what's out in the stores and the restaurants now, too, I, you know, I, I have to say the restaurants are just as bad. You know, they'll load things up. So, in fact, the restaurants in many respects are worse because you don't know what you're getting. At least there's a label in the food food store, you know, and you can at least, you know what you're getting yourself into when you open up a can of something like that. But sometimes in a restaurant, you don't. So, so the progressive soup, is that a good soup for you? I mean, I so the, 
Bacresso, Mine is low, low sodium. So they well, even their low sodium, you have to be very careful with that. You know, even so their low sodium is still about twenty-three to twenty-five percent of your sodium for the day. Yeah. And that's in one can of soup. Yeah. That's a lot. That's a lot. So so even that low so the low sodiums really aren't much better. Sometimes you get the seniors and you get that uh, vegetarian vegetable, which is probably a good one. Yeah. Because I know it's very low sodium because you can't even taste any salt. Yeah, low sodium is that. I mean, yeah, that's that's that's, that's right. where it, that's definitely where it belongs. You know, who puts it up. Not Campbell's. It's right. Well, so so speaking of Campbell's, I yeah. call that the industrial soup complex, um, because you know, to me, it's it's all it looks all the same, right? It you know, I find a lot of it to be just salty. I don't find a lot of extra flavor with it. I, I you know, to me, salt it should enhance flavor. It shouldn't be the flavor. Right. You know. Um, Soup, a lot of people don't know this, canned soup is one of the most highly processed foods you can eat. Yeah, because, you know, if you, if you think about the definition of the, really, the definition of processed food is something really that you can't make at home. You need a big machine or equipment or scientists or something to make it happen. Well, that's, I mean, do you really think those little square cubes of chicken? I mean, do you think someone's dicing that up? I mean, I don't think so, you know, so that, that's the thing, you know. Um, you know, again, lots of fat, calories, and sugar. There's a lot of hidden sugars in soups, particularly potato, uh, potato, tomato soups. Particularly now, the one that you had today, that best, no sugar at all, none, really? none, Ooh, none. I'm going to give you the recipe. You're going to be very surprised at the recipe. Yeah, no sugar at all. I, I don't add sugar to anything. I'm sweet enough, first of all. <laughs> so, <laughs> but really, so seriously. I don't add sugar to anything, and no one has ever missed it. I've never had someone say, this soup is missing sugar. No one has ever said that to me, you know? So, so you must put something else in it and make it. Well, that's my taste. secret. No, okay. uh, no, I'm going to show you. I'm going to give you the recipe. Yeah, okay. No, I'm going to give you the recipe. All right. So sodium, you know, we've talked about this before. Um, you know, Whitman is one of the, the senior centers that I'm here regularly. As you guys know, and I was thinking about this the other day. Another one is Fitchburg. I go there regularly, and I, I I got there and I was talking to them and I said, you know, guys, I come up here and I feel like sometimes I say the same things over and over and over again, and one of them says, well, yeah, we do, but we've seen we see it more now as a support group, and every month we come and we talk about healthy eating and you have new recipes for us to try and it keeps us on the right track. And I was like, I never even thought about it like that, but how what a great thing. You know? Every time you talk about something, then if you talk about it again, oh, I didn't catch that the first That's time. right. You're absolutely right. Yeah. You yeah. always get a little something. That's right. That the first time. That's right. That's right. So, you know, salt, you know, I, it, it bears repeating either way. Salt is very bad for you. Salt, you know, contributes to inflammation. That's what it does. It makes you, you know, retain water. Uh, and it can have very serious health consequences because... Inflammation can affect your internal organs as well as your joints and your legs and all those types of things. So we want to stay away from the salt, which is hard to do when this is what they sell you. <laughs> yeah. And you look at the label, they think, they think we're stupid. Yeah. It's, it's two servings. A can of soup is two servings. I'm, come on now. I, I'm not buying that. <laughs> I'm not buying that. You know. So, so either way, it was 44% of your sodium for the day in in what's arguably, I would say, a snack. You know, for somebody like me, you know, I'm all right, I have a couple extra pounds on me, but still, I'm not just going to have a can of soup for lunch. I'm going to have a can of soup and maybe a half a sandwich or a salad or something like that. But I'm already, I'm already down 40% of my sodium after the can of soup, you know? This one, this one, I did this because I told you I sell prepared soup. So I actually went in, this is the Stop and Shop in Brockton. And I actually went in to take, a, I was just looking at the price. I just wanted to see if my pricing was in line with their pricing. You know, I was like, all right, what do they charge? I deliver, they don't. All right, you know. But then I looked at this and I went, oh my God. And I'm, st I'm surprised they didn't come and arrest me or throw me out. But I'm standing there taking pictures of this. But you look, this is their tomato bisque, right? It has, I, it got 22% sugar, 11 grams of sugar. It has 560 calories, and it has 55% of your fat for the day. I mean, half. the one that we just had. No, no not the one you just had was low fat. It was, it was low fat, low sodium. Yeah. So you had that, and you thoroughly enjoyed it, mm -hmm. right? 
Why are they trying to sell you this? Why? It, the only thing I can think of is that it's cheaper to put a lot of cream and a lot of salt. It's for those are probably the two cheaper ingredients. And how many ounces is that, by the way? So that's 16 ounces. 16. 16 okay. That's 16 ounces, you know. So, but again, you know, who eats eight ounces of soup? Not, a lot of people don't, you know, maybe, you know, some really older folks that have, you know, small appetites. But right. most people are going to eat close to 16 ounces, especially if it's their meal. They're going to eat so close to 16 meal, ounces. you'd probably eat all that. You'd probably eat all that. That's the same we food. probably would. So, you know, women yeah. probably might know. Women might just eat that, you know, if yeah, they're yeah. smaller or something. But you, so you look at that and you say, you know, well, first of all, I mean, look at all the stuff that's in it. Well, yeah. Modified cornstarch, Nissen. I don't even know what Nissen is. You know, it's, you know, know you're better off making it at home. And when I show you my recipe, you're going to be like, really? That's all that's in it? And you had all that flavor. Part of it also prices. because it was fresh. Crazy. You know? So this one isn't, isn't much better. This is Panera's squash soup. Um, you know, you can look at the, you know, the carbs and the sugar are okay. But, you know, the sodium, you're up, you're up at 56% sodium for the day. How much are the carbs in that? And the carbs in this, they're only um, about 17 grams, about 6%. Well, so, which is high, but not, you know, if you can, at a meal, if you can keep it at 45 carbs at a meal, you're okay. How you know? is that the same amount? So that's 16 ounce, yeah, yeah. All right, so let's talk about how do we avoid all these things and how do we, you know, how do we do our own thing, you know? So the first thing is you... Any good soup starts with the stock. So, you, or, And we use the terms interchangeably, by the way, stock and broth. There is a difference. Does anyone know what it is between stock and broth? No. Broth has more in it. So stock is just meat, water, and bones. That's it. Broth is meat, water, bones, and other stuff, vegetables, spices, seasonings, things like that. Yeah, but everyone uses the terms interchangeably, so do I, you know, so. Um, but these are just a few examples of, of the types of stocks you can make. We're going to do a deep dive today, obviously, in chicken stock. That's the most common. But the, the, the general theory of everything that I show you holds up, you know, so really the only thing that changes around a stock is the length of time that you have to simmer the bones or the, the, the food, whichever one it is. Because um, a vegetable stock wouldn't have any bones, you know, so you would just simmer the vegetables. So they give it up very quickly. You know, 20 minutes you, is really all you need to make a vegetable stock. A chicken stock, a couple hours, that's about what you need. Beef is the one that you maybe need a lot of time. Beef is the one that, you know, you, you could go 24 hours, you know. All right, so let's kind of just go through a kind of a quick how to make chicken stock. So I, this is how I do it. You know, you may do it differently. You may know people that do it differently. And if you have a better way, I'd love to hear it and I'll steal it from you. So, <laughs> um, so the first thing is I just kind of going down the ingredients list. I always use a whole chicken. Some people use just bones. Some people use just parts. I can clearly remember my grandfather made chicken when I was younger, chicken soup with just legs. Um, you know, and a lot of it depends on what's available to you. But for me, I use the whole chicken because it has a full kind of flavor profile of the chicken. So, for example, the breast meat gives you that chickeny flavor. You need a meaty cut of something when you're making a stock or a broth because that's what imparts that meaty flavor. And then you also need like the, the wings and uh, even the feet and things like that that have collagen. And that gives kind of a mouth feel. And that, you know, both those two things put together, that's how people know that it's a, a homemade soup. And most people could tell the difference. If you put a, a canned stock and broth and a homemade stock or a broth in front, most 90% of the people could tell the difference from that mouthfeel alone, really. Um, and then I use uh, one onion. I use a carrot, uh, two carrots and two celery. Um, I used to, you see, notice the recipe says quartered, but the pictures, everything is diced. And that's because I was watching one of those um, food science shows. I basically have no life. So I just sit around watching shows about food and, you know, try to get better at what I do. And one of the things they did was one of these test kitchen things where they diced some vegetables, they put some vegetables in whole, and they put some in quartered, and they uh, measured it to see, you know, how much was imparted into the, the broth. And diced came out better because there's more surface area of the vegetable to the water. So... You know, I can't, I'm not going to sit here and tell you that I did that and went, oh my God, it's amazing. I noticed the difference. I really don't. But it's a best practice. So where I'm in the business, I do the best practice. 
Um, now, most of this recipe here is really Julia Child's recipe. You know, if you know me by now, you know I, you know, swipe a lot of stuff from Julia. But this one I changed a little bit. Part of it is because I wanted to reduce the sodium. Um, and part of it is I just didn't want to steal something. I wanted to kind of make my own thing too, you know. So I have since, you're going to see on the next picture, there's a picture of sodium being put on the, the sodium on the chicken before I bake it. I've actually have since eliminated that. I don't add any sodium at all through this recipe. Um, the other thing I changed from Julia is Julia's called for um, three cloves of garlic. And I put a whole bulb. And I slice the bulb in half and just throw it in there, skins and all. Um, and that, I think, brings a real sweetness to it. Clove, right? a, Not the whole no, the whole thing, a whole bulb I put in. Whole the whole bulb? thing, yep. I just take the whole thing, <laughs> cut it right in half, throw it right in there. Yeah, but yep. they're made up, the whole, the whole is made up of individual yep. bulbs. Yep, the whole. Th slice it in half. You, no, you just, it stays together in the skin. You just yeah, right down, on. yeah, like that. Like if you had a donut and you did it like this, it'd be the same thing. Just slice so you right don't through. Slice in each individual. Well, it does because you're slicing through them. Yeah, all at once. All right. Okay. As long as I've interrupted, I find this yeah. very interesting yeah. because it says one tablespoon of apple cider vinegar, which I love. Yeah. Um, now I assume this is all being cooked at the same time. You said chicken would usually take. An hour and a half. Couple a couple hours. Yeah, about a couple. Yeah. Every recipe that I've ever seen, not that I'm a gourmet cook, has always said add lemon juice or vinegar at the last minute. Ah, two different things. You're very good, very astute. That You're talking about two different uses. So she said every, the recipe she's seen have said to add lemon juice or vinegar at the end, and I have it at the beginning. So the ones at the end are when you're serving the soup. So it's all done, and you're getting ready to put it on the table, and yeah. then you drizzle a little bit, and that's for flavor. This, you're using the apple cider vinegar more as a chemical to help draw the nutrients out of the bones. Oh, really? It helps the, the, oh, it helps the bones leach. Yes. Yeah, and it's great that you picked up on that, but there are two different applications of vinegar. Oh, really? Yes. That yeah. was good, because I was going to ask that. Yeah, so this doesn't, like, this doesn't change the flavor at all. You won't even know that it's there. Yeah, you know, you're making a gallon of stock. A tablespoon of that's not going to. Well, I'm getting there. Yep, getting there. Getting there. All right. You guys are good. You know your stuff. And then the only other thing that I do a little different from Julia is Julia's called for 10 peppercorns. And I put two plus tablespoons of peppercorns. So I really bumped the peppercorns way up. Now, you had it. You just had this, that the tomato bisque had that chicken stock as the base. So it doesn't get peppery. But it does add up some flavor, I think, that it picks up for the lack of sodium, you know. So anyway, so then all you're going to do, so now you've got all your, your ingredients ready. And all I do is I use my Dutch oven, and this whole recipe is uncovered. So then you pop the chicken in the oven at, I put it at uh, 400. Lately, I've been doing it to 425. It doesn't really matter. Um, I don't do, like I said, I don't do the salt at all anymore. And then you let, just let it roast and let it go. You know, again, uncovered, and it, it's okay. You can do 45 minutes, you can do an hour, you can do an hour and 10 minutes. It doesn't really matter because you're not going to eat the chicken when you take it out. You still have more time, you know, that you're going to simmer it. So then, then it'll be cooked full. So it'll be cooked full, but it might not be cooked full. And right, if it yeah. isn't, doesn't so it matter. Doesn't have, to, doesn't have to be, you know. Um, and that's kind of the beauty of this. Like, you don't really have to worry. If you were going to take this right out and serve it, you have to worry. You'd have to, oh, you know, you'd have to put a, a temperature uh, check on it and all that. So that's what you're going to get after it roasts. And I dare you to try not to eat a little of the skin. <laughs> um, so that, but now here's... What's that? You could take the skin off, and that would you could certainly do that. You absolutely could, but that you'd be, you know, we wouldn't have as much flavor. Yeah, yeah. Um, so the uh, so you do this, and then if you notice, I use the Dutch oven, and I'm going to use the same pan to make the soup in, and I'm going to do that because you have all that flavor that's kind of built up in there, right? So all I'm going to do now is I'm just going to take the rest of the ingredients, throw them in there. Point in roasting it first. So it builds a little flavor. It builds some flavor. You could not roast it. 
and you would have a lighter colored chicken stock and a lighter flavored chicken stock. You absolutely could do that. I find that roasting really gives it a really nice flavor. Now, what happens, you say a Dutch oven. I don't have a Dutch oven. Could you use something else? Sure, you could use anything, you know, use whatever you want, you know, so. My daughter does her chickens in the uh, slow cooker. Yeah, you could use, you could use a, you could use a crock pot. You could use a, you could use a pressure cooker if you wanted. You could use an Instapot. You could use just a regular steel pan. The only reason I like the Dutch oven is because it goes in the oven and on top of the stove back and forth. You know, you, but you could use two pans, one on the stove and one in the oven and it wouldn't matter. Okay. All right. So now we've roasted, we're going to take it out. We're going to add all of our ingredients, right? And then you're just going to cover it, just barely cover it with water. That's it. So no, you don't really need measurements or anything like that. You're just covering it with water. That's it. And then you're going to bring it up to a boil and then you're immediately going to turn it right down. Don't let it boil for a long time. And the reason you don't let it boil for a long time is there's sediment in the chicken. Remember, we're using a whole chicken. So there's sediment that's in the, ca the body cavity of the chicken, and that rolling boil will push that sediment out into the broth. It's not going to change the flavor. It's not bad for you in any way, but it will cloud out the broth, and it does look kind of unappealing sometimes. You put the whole chicken, you're not taking it apart. You're not taking it apart. You're leaving, the whole, leaving the whole thing in there. You can actually see. So I took the breast meat out. So that's the other thing, is when it comes out of the oven, if you want to, you could take the breast meat out, or any, you could debone the chicken from here and use the meat for something else if you wanted to, or reserve it for chicken soup. You, you absolutely could do that. I don't, I leave it in, I simmer it, and then usually I don't keep much, if any, of it at the end. But I simmer it, you know, I, to me, it, like that soup is gonna make five or six more meals out of that, so I'm okay with that. Some people are not okay with that, and they take, they take the, the chicken off the bone and they use it for chicken salad or fajitas or something like that. And that's fine too. Um, so all you're going to do, when, again, it's going it's to come up to the rolling boil and then you're going to turn it right down to a simmer. And then as it's simmering, this white foam is going to come to the top, right? <laughs> Julia's recipe, she called it scum, the white scum. And I... It does, yeah. Ah, oh, ah, and when the white scum ah, comes to the, yeah, yeah. And I said, yeah, I'm going to change that to foam. I think that sounds a little better. Um, but uh, I'm not as charming as Julia, so I can't get away with this. <laughs> um, so, you know, and then that's just going to come up periodically. If you miss it, don't worry about it. Again, it's not changing the flavor. It's not, it's not bad for you at all. It just clouds the broth. That's all it does. So, again, it's not a huge deal. Um, and then... It's going to evaporate. So that's the other thing is as you, you know, you simmer, you're going to lose about that much. Add more water in. Don't worry about diluting it because you want the right amount of broth and we'll fix flavoring at the end. You know, if it's bland and, and you're like, I'm, it's bland and I'm already adding more, don't worry about it. Just add more water. You'll be fine. All right. Now, when it's all done and it's done in two hours, it's done. You've cooked it for an hour. You know, you've roasted it for an hour, now you've simmered it for two. Sometimes I really only do an hour and a half. Um, I have, you know, it's, all, it's always guys, but I used to, they used to come up to me and go, oh, I've simmered my chicken for 24 hours. You know, and, I'm th and the whole time they're saying, I'm thinking to myself, well, you wasted 22 hours of your life because you only really need the two. You know, yeah, you, simmer, you don't put anything over. Like a no, no, everything's whole recipe's uncovered. A whole uncovered. thing is uncovered. Yep, yep. All right, so now, so we've done it. We've, you know, it's, it's simmered. We feel like it's done. It's given anything up. We've, we're going to strain it, right? And then you're going to discard the solids and you're going to let it cool. Just cool a little bit and then put it in your refrigerator. And you let it cool a little bit. You don't put it in hot because that's going to bring the temperature of all your other food down. About how much um, would be the result of it? So this will this this probably make just shy of a gallon. Just shy of that. Yeah, this will probably, it'll probably make, a, it might make two quarts. Yeah, probably make two quarts. If you do it, if you, you know, you do it right and you add some water as it evaporates, you'll get two quarts out of it. And when you put this in the refrigerator, it's still got the full chicken inside it. No, no, no. You strain it all out now. Oh, you strain so it all everything's out. strained out. So from this point forward, when you're going to. you gonna, strain it out, you strain it into another bowl. Um, you could. So I, what I do is I actually take. You strain it all out and you have your soup. If the water's gone. No, no, no. Well, you strain out the solids. Oh, just the solids. The solids. You keep the soup. Yeah, you keep, you keep the broth. But you okay. throw all the carrots, the onion, the celery, all the solids you throw away. 
Yeah. Oh, too bad. I like carrots. But celery. now you can eat them if you want. Like I have, I have very clear memories of my grandmother when I was a kid sitting at her kitchen table with newspapers on the kitchen table and a boiled chicken from this and picking every last little bit off. I, mean, I have very clear memories of that and eating the carrot or giving it to the dog or what, and that's fine. You can, you absolutely can do that. There's not gonna be a lot of nutrients or a lot of flavor in there because you've been, you boiled it for two hours, yeah. you know, but, but it's fine to eat. There's, there's still some fiber there. You know, there is there's some nutritional value there still. Don't, don't think that there isn't. Um, so you're gonna do that. Strain it, where does, you have to put it in another bowl because so how I do it, yeah, all right, I'm so getting, I see you kind I'm of, confused yeah, okay, so what I do, right, so I have the big pot of the stuff, right, right okay. and then I have a, a clear, like, Tupperware thing, okay. it's, and it just has a, a um, you know, a plastic lid that goes on it, and then I have a metal strainer, right, you strain it into that lid. and I pour into okay. that, okay. and then every once in a while I stop and I have to empty the strainer, because it's got okay, all the so stuff, the and then I keep doing, it, hey, and then it's going in, Not and now I've got it, gone. Okay. no, 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 now it's all in that big package, okay. right, so then, I'm going to put it in the refrigerator overnight, okay. right? And it's going to, going to congeal, and the fat is going to rise to the top. Okay. This is the important part. Is you've got to skim that fat off. Okay. It will taste oily if you don't. It will taste terrible. It really will. It will just be not a good flavor at all. So you have to skim that fat and throw it away. Now, that's why I don't buy organic chickens, because... A, they're very, very, very expensive. But B, everything that I've read, and I'm not, you know, I'm not a scientist or a farmer by any means, but everything that I've read says that birds, particularly chicken, carry their impurities in their fat. So if you're worried about, you know, antibiotics and you know, additives and chemicals and all those types of things, I I'm comfortable with we're scraping off the fat and throwing it away. You have to make your own decision of what you're comfortable with, but I'm comfortable with it. Um, you know, we'll, you know, see me in 30 years. We'll see, you know, if, if I made the right decision or not. But um, so anyway, you just, you know, kind of do that, discard it. And then that's what it should look like, ah, right? Like it jelly. should look like jelly. That's right. It should look like jelly. And if it doesn't now, sometimes it doesn't and it does happen. And if the flavor is okay, it's fine. There's nothing wrong with it. There's nothing wrong with it. The only thing I've been able to to determine is the factor is sometimes if you don't simmer it long enough, it will not, you know, gel like this. But I'm also starting to think it ha might have something to do with what they feed the animals to, what they feed the birds. So, you know, it could, it really could be that, like some of them maybe are on a lower fat diet. So they, you know, the, you know, I don't know, I, you know, someday I'll research it more. But so now you've got it, here it is, and you're going to heat it back up and you're going to taste it. This is where you're going to make a choice. You're either going to add some salt, if it's not, if it doesn't, it might be perfect, and that's fine. But if it isn't perfect and it's bland, you can add salt if you want, or crank the heat up and reduce it by a third. And then all you're doing now is you're just concentrating the, the sodium that's already in there, right? And it, it doesn't take long, it, you know, and it's a really easy way to do it and it, without adding more sodium. So I do that, and again, you want to keep in mind, if you're using this for a recipe, keep know that in advance. Like, all right, if I make two quarts, I'm going to boil down a third of it, you know, or 20% of it or whatever it is you decide to do, you know. But that is a, that does work. All right, so now, so we've made, yep. Could we go back to that chicken business? No, no, you don't have to turn it back. Um, you, if you say chicken soup or buy a chicken, yep. generically, you wouldn't buy a roaster. <clears throat> yes, I use a roaster. Oh, I well, absolutely... I in um, taste or texture? No. One chicken over another? No. No. Well, there is. There, there's more. Definitely more fat in a roaster. Oh, there's nice. more. Probably more sodium in a roaster because there's more meat on it. That because there's naturally sodium in the chicken too. So whereas if you get a hen that you know a laying hen that's what they would call a fowl, uh, you know there's not a lot of meat. Anymore. Sure, you can market really? basket. Uh, well, it's no, it's not um, price right. I've seen them at Price Right. I've seen them at Market Basket. Stop and Shop. Okay. I got rabbit at Stop and Shop one day. So, so <laughs> would be all right if absolutely, it. absolutely, and cheaper, much, yeah, much cheaper. Yeah. I thought they didn't have bowels yeah. anymore because they use it all for chicken pies or whatever. No, no, you can still find. They sell it usually in like heavy, thick bags, and there's usually two in one bag, clear. Yeah. Try the Price Right. 
over, it used to be, um, in yeah, no, it's in Brockton still. What, what did it used to be called? Um, what community? Save a lot. It used to be save a lot in Brockton oh, on, the, over there? on the east side. Now it's price, right? That's yeah. The village. Try that over the village. Yeah. Yeah. All right. So now, so let's talk about other stocks you can make too. So now I want you to think like corn stock. Think about it this way. It's the same process. It's just the corn cobs are, instead of the bones, you're using the corn cobs. That's really it. And, and then you can play around with it. So what I do now is from this point forward, I just kind of point out what's a little different about the recipe. You know, I don't need to go through each and every one. But this particular one is the, the big thing here is, see that you char the yellow onion. And you can do that on any stove. You can just, you know, just cut the skin off and plop. Even if you have one of those flat top electric stoves, you can just put it right on there. It'll still char. You got to clean it up. I have a question. The corn cobs, you take the kernels off, right? Yep. Can you, you probably could use a kernel corn inside the soup. You sure could. You put them aside, make your stock, and then throw them back in for the soup if you want. Yep. Wow, with the price of corn, when the kit, the, with the price of corn, that's, that's, that is. Is. Yep. that's an expensive. Yeah. Well, it, it is. It is. So, you know, the other, you know, you look, you want to look for corn that, you know, is in season that you can get, and you know, relatively cheap when it's on sale, you know, things like that. This you know, you could also do this if you had a party and you just collect the corn cobs at the end, if you really wanted to do that too. It's like, it's another way, like you would collect the chicken brine. You know, it's, it's certainly, you know, you could just take the cobs off with a knife, you know, for the party if you wanted and then use the cob. Or you could, if people bit into them, I guess you could still use them, but I don't know if people would like that. So this is a great one if you're, um, I was married to a vegetarian for a while, which was horrible. No, it's not. She was a vegetarian for a while and My, we were married to her. We were married for a while, yeah. She's still a vegetarian. But she, yeah, but she, you know what? It was like a bait and switch thing. We were dating and she wasn't a vegetarian and then we got married and then she was a vegetarian all of a sudden. So, um, yeah, no, but she actually, she pushed me in, in that direction a lot. And so one of the things I asked her, she had probably given it up for, it probably been about three or four years and so I asked her one night, I said, what do you miss the most for meat, meat products? You know, what's, think about it for a minute. What's the, the biggest thing that you miss? And she thought, and she thought, and she thought, and she said, beef stew. Oh, really? And I said, okay, well, I could see that, you know, I mean, that's pretty hardy for, you know, beef. And so I came up with this, I didn't come up with it. I kind of, you know, cobbled it together from other recipes this mushroom stock that I used to make a meatless beef stew and it came out great. So the key to this is you saute the mushrooms. I, I really have to change this. It says to saute for about um, 15 minutes. You really should let them go about a half an hour. And the reason is you want to get all the water out of the, the mushrooms so you get down to the concentrated mushroom flavor. And then you're going to add for the, the saltiness, soy sauce, Worcestershire sauce, and fish sauce. If you don't like fish sauce, you don't have to add it. You know, if you don't, that doesn't, doesn't matter. You could use, you know, the other two is, if you wanted. Um, but I use the three and I think it really works out well. And then, like I said, now this makes, if you wanted to, and I made a meatless beef stew with her and I did, I just used um, potatoes, carrots, um, parsnips. I used some um, sweet potatoes and then I just did a little bit of tofu. I just took a little tofu and browned it and threw that in there. And it came out really good, you know. So I really, I recommend that. If you want to make a vegetable stock, this is how you would do it. Uh, I wouldn't recommend buying vegetables to make a vegetable stock. It would be very expensive, you know. Um, but what I do is I just keep the scraps, you know, as I'm cooking and the peels of carrots and the skins of the onions. And, all, and when I have enough, then I make a stock out of it, you know. All right, let's look at some recipes. Oh, that sounds good. So this is a, so I have the fall ones first and then I'll kind of get into the spring ones. But this one, hands down, every, I've been doing the soup workshops for about a year now. So, I, you know, I've, I've done quite a few of them. And in the fall, I usually have a tasting. I bring a couple different ones and I, I ask people to pick their favorite one. This one wins every single time. Um, and the reason I think it wins every single time is down here. You simmer the Parmesan Reggiano cheese rind. You get a cheese. You cut the rind off and you simmer it in the broth for a little while, um, and then you fish it out before you serve it. What is the rind? And if you forget to fish it out and you serve it to somebody, you just say, "Oh, it's your lucky day." The hard part around the cheese. Yeah. Oh, the hard part. The hard part around the cheese. Yeah. So you serve the rind. You know, if somebody gets the rind, you say, "Oh, it's your lucky day. You got the rind." 
Um, but this is a, a really great one. This one, put the fresh herbs in at the end, you know, so put the spinach and stuff like that. That's the last thing. Even really take it off the heat and put those in. You don't necessarily, you don't need to cook those. But this is a fantastic recipe. Rinse very the beans. Nutritious. Very nutritious. There's, other than the cheese, there's not anything in here that, that, that isn't good for you. You know, I mean, the spinach and the beans alone are worth it. You know, and the white beans are great. They're very have good. Have those written down anywhere? The recipes? I do. I do. Um, I can send them to, I'll send them to Melissa and she'll print them for you. Okay. This is a great one. So, this is something I know I did the diabetic workshop here. And this is, this came out of that where I was trying to cut my blood sugar, my, my sugar intake. And my carb intake, and I was at a nutritionist, and she's the one that suggested use lentils and beans instead of pasta in soups. And I did it, and I'm Italian, and I did it, and I never looked back. I love it. Wow, more nutritious. Yeah, much, sure. much more nutritious, um, easier, easier to cook. You don't have to keep them separate. Like the pasta, you have to keep separate from the soup so it doesn't suck it all up. It doesn't matter with the lentils and the beans. So, still you know. got Italian stuff. It's good for tomato. Yeah, you still, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Oregano. So I, and I use red lentils. When I make soup, I always use red lentils. And the reason is that because they break up, they, they, they break there down. Lentils. There is a difference. There is. So no, red no, lentils, lentils, nope. Are no, so okay. red lentils break down quite a bit. And then the, uh, the green, the brown, and uh, the green and the brown really hold their shape well. So you can still use them in soup, but they're better for like salads and Indian food and things like that. And the black lentils hold their shape the most. They, they don't break down at all. Um, so, and they, they call them beluga or caviar lentils because they look like caviar. Yeah. Now I'll show you lentils that you put into the soup itself. Yeah, right there. Is it right there? Oh, in the top one. Okay, I didn't know. Okay, so first right. ingredient. I didn't even see. I All right. Saw, okay. No more tomato bisque for him. That's it. That's <laughs> <laughs> he <laughs> shut off. <laughs> so this one now, keep in mind, I prefer a thin chowder. So what you see here, and I and I do that for a couple. One, I just don't like a thick chowder, but also. The thickening agents are not good for you. You know, it's flour or butter usually, you know. So I try to avoid that. So I actually, for this one, I love how that picture came out too. That's my phone that takes these pictures. It's really amazing what you can do, you know. Um, but the, um, this one, I use the Old Bay seasoning. That's the key. Old Bay? Oh, you haven't heard of Old Bay? I bet you have. You've seen it. It's in a yellow tin like this in the spices section. It's just a mix of all different spices, paprika, uh, red pepper, there's you know black pepper in there, there's probably um, garlic powder, onion powder. Oh, you use it primarily? I use it for everything, but most people use it for seafood. Most oh. people use it for, yeah. I wonder why. Uh, crab, bo they, crab boils. It started as a crab boil uh, recipe. Yeah, Old Bay was, uh, it was for like crab boils and crawfish boils and things like that. And now people use it on a lot of stuff. I love it. I, I think it's fantastic. Now, the light cream, would that make it a little fattening or whatever? A little bit. And that's why I use bit. light cream. And that's, you can see, I look at, you can really see there's just a tiny bit of white cream that I use in there. I don't use a lot. You know, but again, I, I prefer, you know, a thinner, brothier soup or chowder. And the butter is fat. Yeah, it's certainly not, you know, what's good about this is you're eating fish. Right. Yeah. You know, and we need to eat more fish. Right. You know, that's just, we know that dietarily. Brain so sometimes, it, brain food. So sometimes you make a little trade-off, say, oh, I'll have a little butter with the fish, you know? Mm -hmm. So as long as you don't do it all the time, you're okay. So you remember that Panera butternut and squash one? This, so I want you to look, there's no cream in this. There's no butter in this. Wow. No one, and everywhere I've brought this, everyone in the fall, people love it. They're like, yeah, oh my God, this is unbelievable. Butter. And what, I think you guys did. Yeah, we did. I did, right? And and I remember you guys saying the same thing. There's no cream in that. Are you sure there's no cream? There's no cream in it. No butter, you know? Um, and for, to me, I think I think for this one, I think it's the ginger. Because if you allow, particularly I, I find, we tend to cover up the good flavor. So ginger is the curveball here. Like we all know what, what butternut squash tastes like. You know, yeah. you could put cinnamon in it or you could put cream, you know, whatever you want. But the ginger is really the star of this, this soup, I think. So if you allow the ginger to, to shine through, you don't have to worry about all that other stuff. It, 
It does. It does. It does. But that's the thing is you can, you can, it's your soup. So you can customize it if you want. You can add less ginger or more ginger, you know? So this one, um, this one I do at the end of the gardening season, like, somewhere in October, and I'll tell, I've done it for like three years in a row now, and it, it's always different. Every time it comes out different, it never comes out the same, but that's the fun of it. So you just go through and say, what do I have left for herbs that, that are going to die tomorrow if I leave them out because it's going to frost tonight? And then you just pull them all up, wash them, dice them. I add in, you know, some onion, celery, carrot, and a little bit of yellow bell pepper. Really, I did the yellow bell pepper more for flavor, uh, for color than flavor. Um, and then just Cook it till it's soft, puree it as, as thick or as thin as you like, it doesn't matter. I tend to go all the way with it. And then drizzle it with a little lemon juice or olive oil. Yeah, it it's good. fantastic and it, it tastes like you're, you're sipping your garden, you know? It's really amazing. Um, and like I said, I do that every year at the end of the season. And, and it's different, you know, different with different herbs. So this is the tomato bisque recipe that you had and then all you're going to change, actually, all, there's actually a little bit of a change here. Um, I didn't use the cayenne, and I didn't use the basil, and I used coconut milk instead of the cream. And that's what you guys had. That's good. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, I mean, and again, I'm always, you know, the, the amount of flavor that comes out of it for, for so few ingredients, I, I think, is, is what's the most interesting. So there's, there are the ingredients there. That's kind of, yeah. You can take a picture, go ahead, that's fine, yeah. Um, but these are, um, you know, so I've been showing recipes this way lately too, just kind of give you an idea of the simplicity of it, you know? Now I have a question, a lot of the recipes you have have either pepper or peppercorn in it. Yeah. Does that add a lot of the flavor to the soup? I or? think it does. I'm, you would call me, I'm a heavy, salt. I'm a heavy pepperer. As a separate substitute for the salt. I pepper. think it does. Okay. I think it does. but. But, it's probably better but people have different tastes it's too. Better for you than the salt. Oh, it's much better than the salt. <laughs> much better than the salt. So you know, as we kind of near the end, so some tips to make your soup healthier: use plant-based proteins, and and I don't mean like the Beyond Meat. I don't mean that's the fake meat stuff. I mean beans and lentils and things like that. Um, you always use a low-sodium broth. Um, you know. Add whatever nutritious veggies you like. It's just, you think of it, it's just another serving of vegetables that you might not have ordinarily had. Um, lentils and beans instead of pasta. If you use kale or spinach, put it in at the end. Don't put it in at the beginning. Again, lemon and vinegar juice at the end, unless you're doing it for the stock at the beginning. And this last little tip, I've been doing this for years. I just keep a bag of mixed frozen vegetables in my freezer. And I, I, every time I'm cooking, I look at it, I go, could I throw more vegetables into this? And most of the time, the answer is yes. And I just throw another handful in, and I figure it's more than I would have got before. You know? Bisques. Bisques are a great way to get a lot of vegetables uh, without feeling like you ate a lot of food. Um, a classical bisque, you know, hopefully there's no uh, French folks here, but in France, a classical bisque is from really shellfish. Classical bisque is from shellfish stock. Yeah, yeah. Um, we, we've done what we do in America, and we've kind of taken a, uh, put our arms around it and made it our own. So bisque for us now is basically anything that's pureed and at, with a little cream added, I guess you would say. Uh, but there's all kinds of combinations you can use with bisque, and you can really experiment and have a lot of fun. Um, and it freezes really, really well. Uh, in particular, if you don't put the cream in, if you're, I don't put a lot of cream anyway, so I just freeze it with the cream. But if you do like more cream, make your bisque, freeze it, but don't add the cream. Freeze it and then add the cream when you, when you heat it up. That's another way to do it. All right. I found this app on my phone that takes the background out, so I started taking all these crazy pictures. Um, you know, all right, so now we'll get into some, some spring kind of, things that you could think about. So this, I was playing around with this, I, corn and leek bisque. What's interesting about this one, and I actually didn't even use corn on the cob. I bought a bag of frozen corn at Market Basket. It was uh, yellow sweet corn. And um, the corn doesn't get really ground up fine. So this, it's still a little chunky when you eat it. So it, it's, it feels more like a meal than soup. It's, it's pretty cool. 
So this is my current bestseller. This is, I make a, a no sodium chicken stock. So, you know, I, if there's sodium in it, it's already there, but I don't add any new sodium. I just make the, the stock and then I simmer six plus different types of vegetables and I throw some beans in there and people love it. And the key to it is the different vegetables. So I use parsnips, which give a really different flavor, sweet potato, you know, as, a, and, and, and as opposed to regular potato, you know, things like that. But it's really, a, it's a great soup. I mean, is that those little small beans? Yeah, little green we, ones. We got vegetables from the uh, Starman shop, and they have edamame. I never yeah. heard of it before. Yeah, edamame. They're yeah. supposed to be like it's supposed to be like a healthy. It's food. supposed to be very, very, very good for you. It's yeah. Like the green yeah. giant bread, little yep. small boxes. Yeah. Yep. There you go. Just right. like that. Yeah. I think it has the peas in it. Yeah. So this is a this is a completely raw cold soup. That's excellent. It's excellent. Um, and all you do is you just take eight different vegetables. And it really, the vegetables don't matter except for the two main ones. It's equal parts zucchini and cucumber. And what? Cucumber. Oh. It's equal okay. parts zucchini and cucumber. And the cucumber that you use, don't, get a, don't use a slicing cucumber. Try to get one that doesn't have a lot of seeds. And if it does have a lot of seeds, just scrape the seeds out, you know. Um, but, and then you can just add anything else you want. So I added spinach and watercress, I think. I had that. I had a little orange bell pepper. I added that. Um, I added a green onion, I think. You know, and that's and and the last thing you do is you make it, puree it so it's nice and smooth, then take one last cucumber and dice it by hand, really, really fine, as fine as you could do it by hand, and mix that in. And it just adds a little texture to it, a little crunchy texture to it. Um, and then before you serve it, drizzle it with, you know, whatever you want to drizzle it with. You could, you could do lemon juice. Uh, you could do hot sauce, mm -hmm. you know, lemon juice would be very nice. Yeah. Um, th I, and it freezes. Awesome. It's it, really? because it's a cold soup anyway, it never even gets heated up. So, you know, it's raw. And it, so it's, when it comes out, it tastes exactly the same as when it went in. So this is the co there it is. So this is the coconut tomato bisque, right? Yeah, this is the one you had, you know, and again, it's just use that same recipe as before. And just instead of the cream, use the coconut milk. Um, you know, it still is high calorie, by the way. Coconut milk still does have calories, but it's, it has a lot less calories than cream. Um, it's a great choice for diabetics. And it's supposed to help with inflammation. I've read that about coconut milk, you know, quite a bit, um, which is kind of what got me into it. All right, let's just quickly go through some, some of these. Some of these you've seen before. I freeze my soups in these things, the paper, and that way if I forget to defrost them, I can just peel the paper off and throw the block of frozen soup in the uh, pan. You guys have seen this better than bullion? So this is a fantastic product. It's just loaded with sodium, loaded. So just use, use like a quarter of what they, you know. It says the low sodium. Yeah, it's not. <laughs> even, even their low sodium is, is high sodium. Same, like their high, their, their regular one is 27% sodium and their low sodium is 23% sodium. I mean, you know, that it's not that big a deal to me. Tons of flavor. And they make a bunch of different kinds. They have, um, th they make a ham Silver, one. Would be sober soups. Shaw's, yeah, uh, Shaw's. Yeah, yeah, right where the canned soups are. Yeah. If you're going to use a box stock, I recommend this one. I do. I use that Do you? It's the best one, I think. Although, this one's pretty good, too. Uh, I was in Costco, and they had a little sample. of That's their house brand, Kirkland. That's the Costco brand. And um, they had a little sample of it, and uh, I bought, well, you had to buy six. So I bought six. Um, but... They're, it's excellent. And you mentioned you don't use organic chicken, but you use organic Well, chicken. this just happened to be organic. I would have bought regular if they had okay, it, but okay. it just sold as organic. Okay. But again, that, you know, those samples, that works. That Given the samples at Costco, mm -hmm. that does work. That's smart. Yeah. <laughs> um, so I use this minced garlic, and I get the signature brand, which is Shaw's. And I get that because it, uh, one of them they pack in water, not in um, salt or oil or anything like that. So that's why I do it. But, uh, you know, it, 
it's easy. It's probably cheaper too. It uh, probably is. Yeah. yeah. So if you like the pure, if you like the pureed soups, you got to have one of these. You got to have a stick blender, and they're they're cheap enough. Uh, otherwise, you're just pouring things into a blender and pouring it back into your pan. So you know it's, and if you're like me, you end up with it all over yourself instead of where it's supposed to be. You know. So this is what I brought the soup in today. I always give a shout out to Stanley. And I give a shout out to them because I have had soup in these things for 12 hours that's been hot coming out. And you know, you hear there's a brand that everyone talks about now, Yeti. Have anyone heard of that brand, Yeti? Everyone's like, oh, Yeti, Yeti, Yeti. And I'm like, they've been around since 1913. Are they the Stanley people that sell uh, tools? Mm -hmm. But they originally did this. This is what this was there. You remember the all the workmen would go with the green Stanley thing, you know? I still metal? think it's the best product. They're all they aluminum. They're all aluminum. Yeah, so yep. keep it hot they keep it hot, and you can get them at Walmart for 20 bucks. You know? I, li I literally have friends that buy Yetis for like yeah, $120. You my know? father worked at the shipyard and he had the metal one. Yeah. Keep the coffee in it. I have I have probably um, probably ten of those. Mm -hmm. And, you know, because I use them for these, for the soup tastings and things like that. Every time you have a glass one and you drop them, it's gone. Yeah, I never had one of yeah, those, but I do know a lot of people that did. Yeah. All right. And then finally, you know, I, you can't buy it because I didn't bring any with me. But there is one product that changes the face of the cooking world. Oh, there you go. Now, what is it at the table? Do you have some here? I didn't. I forgot to bring them. Oh, I'll bring them next time. I'm here all the time. But you got to read the quotes. Dave's mom. <laughs> I'll read them for you. you. Become a Soup Master is the single greatest collection of soup recipes known to mankind. Dave is a genius and quite handsome. <laughs> By Dave's mom. <laughs> and then the other one said, I wish I was still around to enjoy these recipes that are all way better than mine, said Julia Child. <laughs> I don't think Julia really said that to you. No. Yeah. You to well, especially to since she's you dead. How much yeah. You have to pay her to say that? Yeah. Right. Yeah, yeah. So uh, if you want, you can get these on my website. And next time I'm back, I'll throw a couple in the car. But all these recipes are in there too. Um, Therapygardens.com. Oh really? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Therapygardens.com. Oh, what do you want? That? You want this? Okay. All right. Oh, and then you can practice sending it to me. <laughs> oh, and then yeah. at, at the end of this, if you guys can hang out at the end of this, I'm going to show you one other thing real quick. Whoops. I went too far. So Which one's mom? No, that's okay. the Plymouth Senior Center. So this, are you ready for this? This is a, look at this thing. It's on wheels. It lights up. It's an indoor community garden. Right? I invented it. And I was going to make millions on it. And this is the prototype, the sample that I made that I donated to Plymouth because no one bought it. So I didn't get make millions on it. So, <laughs> yeah, but it is cool, right? Yeah, you know, swing and a miss for an idea.